today's lecture we will start discussion on first order logic. So far whatever we have discussed involved propositions and some logical connectives. Let us recall a declarative sentence which is either true or false is called a proposition. Now, we denoted proposition by lower case letters P, Q, R and so on. We also introduced logical connectives which are used to combine several propositions to obtain compound propositions and sometimes we call those compound propositions as propositional functions assuming that the original propositions are uh, in fact variables. So, we introduced compound propositions which are sometimes referred to as compound statements we also introduce propositional variables which we do not buy P, Q, R and so on and propositional functions. Now, the logical connectives that we introduced are conjunction disjunction negation conditional and at the end biconditional conjunction is also called and denoted by a wedge, disjunction is called or denoted by a V, negation is either denoted by overline or a tilde or a symbol like this, conditional by a right arrow or a right arrow uh, like this and a biconditional as a two sided arrow or a symbol like this.
we also introduced another idea of logical implication that is an implication which is always true and rules of inference. Now, a logical inference uh, involves uh, are of two type valid and invalid. So, uh, valid inference and faulty inference. Now, whatever logical system that we have discussed based on this and uh, the proofs methods of proof altogether is called propositional logic. Or zeroth order logic. Now, what we see at this point is that by using propositions, simple propositions and this framework of uh, propositional logic, we cannot express everything that we would like to express. That is why we introduce something uh, which is more general than a proposition which is called an open proposition or a predicate. We will soon discuss what we mean by a predicate, but uh, what happens is that with these more general form of propositions, we can use the logical connectives and uh, inferences and methods of proof and build up a more powerful logical framework which is called the first order logic or predicate logic. Now, first let us look at what we mean by a predicate. Now, we often have some propo uh, propositions like this, uh, 3 by 4 is a rational number. We can have another proposition like half is a rational number. Yet another as root 2 is a rational number. Now, what we note over here that in all these cases we are considering rational numbers 
and we are putting some numbers in the beginning and making a statement that that number is a rational number. Let us see this again 3 by 4 is a rational number half is a rational number root 2 is a rational number. Now, what we see over here is that we are considering numbers and we can probably fix our discourse to a set u of real numbers. We are picking up numbers from u and asking uh, and stating that that number is a rational number. Sometimes this proposition is true and sometimes the proposition is false depending on the number that we have chosen. For example, in this case the first proposition 3 by 4 is a rational number is true, half is a rational number is true, but root 2 is a rational number is false. We can write this in a more compact way as stating that our universe of discourse is u the set of real numbers and we are building up a statement x is a rational number. where x can take any value from u. We can also write this as p x. Now, we see that the p x that I have written here is not a proposition. It is not a proposition because it is not meaningful to specify a truth value to this statement if we do not fix x. X is a rational number where X may take any value from you. Sometimes it will be true and sometimes it will be false. However, if I keep on putting values of X from you, then I will get propositions which has got uh, 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 specific truth values. So, this p x can be thought of as a function from the set u that is the universe of discourse that we have to fix before we start any discussion 
and uh, to the set containing two symbols p and f and we can suppose that p uh, designates true and f designates false. So, here we are looking at function from u the universe of discourse to the set f comma p and this function is p which can take the values x and the so the function is x is a rational number when I put that then the truth value of that will be uh, f or p and this is how I am thinking p as a function. Now, it is quite possible that I have got more than one variables varying over a universe of discourse. For example, let us consider the universe of discourse to be r cross r. where r is the set of real numbers. Now, we consider a proposition of uh, uh, an open proposition or a predicate of the type s x comma y x plus y equal to 5. So, here the sentence is x plus y equal to 5 where x comma y varies over the universe of discourse or simply the universe u. So, if we want to formalize s will be associated to a function from u cross u to the set f t. This is also a predicate. Now, we are in a position to define predicate in a general framework.
So, a predicate or an open proposition in n variables from a set u is a function f from u to the power n which is essentially the Cartesian product of u taken n times to a two symbol set p f as where t stands for true and f stands for false. The set u is called the universe of discourse or simply universe of the predicate f. Now, let us look at some examples of predicates. Now, we have al al already seen that R x, x is a rational number is a predicate. G y y greater than 5 is also a predicate 3 s x comma y x plus y is equal to 5 this is also a predicate. Now, here we have to remember that whenever we talk about predicate we have to be careful in what uh, we are assuming as the universe. In case of R x, the universe can be rational numbers, it can be real numbers, it can be complex numbers and so on. In case of G y, these are also we see that uh, it is tacitly assumed that it is a number, y is a number and in case of x, uh, the second one, it is also assumed uh, or understood that x, y are going to be numbers, it may be real, complex or uh, any other numbers. On the other hand, we, we can have predicates like this E x, x climbed Mount Everest. Here we see that it is of course possible to, to have the universe as numbers, but it is not going to be very meaningful. Because if I say that x varies over real numbers, then no real number has ever climbed Mount Everest. So, uh, it, it makes no meaning. In this case, the universe uh, might be uh, the set of all human beings, and among those set of human beings, there are some who climb Mount Everest. And of course, uh, many others who have never climbed Mount Everest. Like this, we can have predi other predicates. Let us look at C y x plus y is a lawyer. and so on. 
we can have many other predicates like this. Once we have understood the definition of predicate, we will move on to a definition of another very useful uh, uh, notion which is called a quantifier. We observe that declarative sentences use words to indicate quantity such as all, some, none, one, etcetera. For example, we have statement, statement like all human beings have two legs. or we can say at least one human being has two legs. or there is no human being without a head. Here we are seeing that our universe of discourse is the set of all human beings and we are sometimes saying that all of them has two legs or at least one of them have two legs or uh, none of them is without a head. So, these are somehow indicating some quantities of human being having something. Now, this idea uh, gets formalized to two specific quantifiers which are called universal quantifier and existential quantifier. Quantifier all is called the universal quantifier.
it is denoted by the symbol inverted A. If Q is our universe of discourse, then the phrase for all x belonging to u or simply for all x, we will mean, uh, uh, well we write this as uh, for all x in u. So, this inverted a x belonging to u or inverted a x will designate the phrase for all x in u or if u is already specified and understood we may simply say for all x. Now, suppose P x is a predicate we can construct a proposition denoted by this which will read as for all x I am writing within bracket u which we usually omit while writing p x is true. Now, note that for all x in u p x is true. Now, we note that this although p x is a predicate for all x p x is a proposition. This is true if for each and every x in the universe of discourse p x is true otherwise this proposition is false. Moving on from the universal quantifier we come to existential quantifier. Suppose P x is a predicate we can construct a proposition there exists x in u such that p x is true. This phrase there exists is written in a compact notation as there exists x in u or simply there exists 
x and the complete proposition is written as there exists x p x. This symbol which is which signifies there exists is called the existential quantifier. Now, once we have these quantifiers and predicates and of course, the universe of discourse, we can form several sentences. Now, let me list down some sentences uh, before I end this lecture and in the next lecture, we will look at these sentences more carefully and more in more details. So, we will have sentences like this. For all x f x, this is essentially all true. Then we have things like there exist x f x, this means at least one true. Now, I can have negation of this that is negation of there exist x f x. This means that there exists x in u such that f x is true negation of that. So, this means if this is true then that means that none true. For all x not of x negation of f x this means all false then there exist x such that negation of f x this means at least one false then negation of there exists x negation of f x this means none false negation of for all x f x this means not all true and lastly negation of for all x negation of f x this means not all false. In the next lecture we will consider sentences of this type and uh, uh, in more details. This is the end of the present lecture. Thank you.